Spec Ops 2, put it frank, is dumb. As a game mode, no. As an experience, it has no place in modern COD. And even in the past CODs like OG MW2 and, dare I say, MW3, Spec Ops did not feel like a standalone experience. It doesn't even compare to other experiences like the campaign, multiplayer zombies, nor extinction. Now, some of you might be big fans of Spec Ops and Survival and other mini games within Go Up, but I'm not here to tell you that you are dumb for liking them, nor do I dislike them. In fact, this is not a video about why Spec Ops shouldn't exist. <laughs> no, 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 my dear friends. Lift those Dorito Dust gamer paws off the dislike button and onto your chins as you witness this jump dropping revelation. Spec Ops, or Co op, doesn't really hold up on its own, but why should it stand alone? If you really think about it, survival is just a glorified multiplayer mode on pretty much exact one to one multiplayer maps, just with enemy AI in the mix. Sure, that's maybe not giving enough credit where it's due, but then you also have Spec Ops missions. They're just multiplayer on campaign missions. You get in a party you too, you do your section of the campaign mission with your friend, you get a star for how well you did, you get the picture. So my question is, why isn't this the default? I mean, you got MW3's campaign coming out in a bit and there's some massive open world maps with so many ways to approach the objectives. There's zip lining, there's swimming, you can grapple, there's stealth play, you can see how the minimap turns yellow or red if you're gonna alert the enemy, you can choose how and when you'd like to approach a base. This is like a modern first person Ghost Recon Wildlands essentially. <laughs> just without the friends we made along the way. But seriously, why don't we just have co-op built in strictly into the campaign, or at least into these open world levels? Modern Warfare 2 has co-op missions. I believe at launch there was about three or four you could do. I'm not really sure if they're available solo though, which would be the biggest risk if we want an online campaign. Time and time again, we do see giving these companies an inch allows them to take a mile. Wildlands, beloved offline co-op game, got a sequel, and it's purely online. Can't wait for those servers to shut down one day and remove access to the entire game. But yeah, uh, MW3 Zombies is apparently getting a 24 player open world mode similar to Outbreak. I just hope this Zombies is available offline and in private matches. If not, ooh, that's not gonna be good for COD. Activision's a greedy company, it's not like they don't want to shut down old CODs to forcefully move players into new ones, right? September 21st, 2023, mark it down on your calendars cause Caldera Island will be no more. After about four years of service, Warzone 1 is finally getting shut down. Uh, scary potential online-only co-op and solo experiences aside, I do think this could still be done right. Black Ops 3 back in 2015 attempted it. Sure, that campaign isn't exactly, uh adequate, but that's for totally different Triangle. reasons. Ooh. I think the ideas, the concepts at play are far better than the execution of that underdeveloped campaign. You had not only the start of co-op and campaign integration, not only the ability to play solo like a regular campaign versus with a friend, but you had real player progression. Like I would kill for a replayable open world COD campaign, literally a wildland successor. I don't even care if battle royale and campaign share the same map, but what we need is the campaign to be top priority, then the battle royale can be built on top of it, secondarily. Not that we need battle royale, but uh, what I'm simultaneously saying here is that we could knock two birds out with one stone. And then we'd also get some more support on multiplayer, so well, perhaps that's more like three birds with one stone. COD devs need to work smarter, not harder. That is the lesson. You got so many modes these days that you're just spreading yourselves too thin. Like for Pete's sake, you guys thought it was a good idea to start adding 2v2 maps six months into this game's life cycle? Dude, Alley and Black Sight are completely designed from the ground up. That support could have been reallocated into a new 66 map. The game was starved for 66 content in season 1 and 2. Like why wasn't this support put into those two seasons? The most important ones. If you guys wanted 2v2 so badly, it should have been done for launch, with maps like Mercado Gunfight. If I'm not mistaken, this map was actually a location part of Almazra, with very little changes done to it, to make it into a perfectly playable 2v2 map. Work smarter, not harder, guys. This is how you do it. And I don't just mean for the sake of getting content out faster, at a lower quality. I think devs should always strive for doing the best they can, but what this could have done, working smarter not harder, is grant more support for player progression. More time and effort could have been put into seasonal events. We didn't even get a Christmas event this year unless you count that reskin of Christmas shipment that only stayed in the game for a couple weeks, then was completely deleted. 
For some reason, year after year, all three of the main COD dev studios decide to put time and effort into a Christmas map variant that is then deleted. That is wasted resources, guys. Just straight up make a ground up Christmas themed map, drop it at Christmas, and done. Smarter, not harder. There you go, there's your season one reloaded map. Other types of progression though, besides events, could have been all the campaign skins available behind a tough challenge within the campaign. I know BO3 had campaign skins available to unlock, and BO3 had camels specifically unlocked through the campaign. That's pretty dope. There weren't too, too many, but they were still there. In an open world COD mission like MW3's, I think some campaign camel challenges could entail zipline kills, getting 40 suppressed chain kills without being detected, or perhaps something as easy as kills on armored reinforcements. Go guns a blazing. The possibilities are endless, so I'd love to hear any of your guys' feedback in the comment section below too. I think this type of thinking could really benefit COD and reorganize each game into something more whole. Survival as just another mode under multiplayer would be kind of neat too. Like imagine if they innovate it to the point where we get variants of survival mode, where once you go fully down and die, you become one of the enemy AI combatants. It'd be like a new spin on the infected mode. This time you just got extra AI teammates by your side that have guns while you're stuck with a knife. And maybe no throwing knives just for balancing sake. But yeah, once you go down and die, you'd just be able to keep playing the game by responding as an infected. This would also make it so that the people camping out the infected in the regular infected mode have to actually move around the map. After all, buy stations grant you armor, ammo, streaks, equipment, all that essential stuff, and enemy AI is gonna shoot you if you're in the open at the back of the map. It'll be essential to move around. This fully differentiates classic infected from my new survival mode with infected elements. Yeah, I'm gonna call this mode survival of the infected going forward. <laughs> it's got a nice ring to it. But yeah, anyways, remember to smack that like button on your way out. Let me know in the comments what you thought of the video and if co-op should be merged into other modes, like the campaign. I think so at least. I hope you do too. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out, Emmys.